We spent some time designing the aggregate demand curve by stacking aggregate expenditure on top of aggregate demand. Now if we just look only at aggregate demand, we can explore a little bit of it and dig deeper. So if you have a blank graph like this, when we're talking about the aggregate demand aggregate supply model, specifically here aggregate demand, we're always want to graph price level versus real GDP. That's your first step. Aggregate demand, just like a demand curve for oranges, is downward sloping. And you can always think of D, aggregate demand, for downward sloping. So we're going to have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So we're going to label this AD, aggregate demand curve. What this is telling us is we have some sort of price level that's always going to be associated with a level of real GDP. The price level might change. Maybe the price level goes up. Let's call this price level one. It's going to be associated with a different level of real GDP. This is a movement along. We could also, we could also see aggregate demand shift. Perhaps we see an increase in aggregate demand. We see some sort of aggregate demand B, a second aggregate demand. This would be an increase in aggregate demand. Or we could see a decrease in aggregate demand. Perhaps we see a decrease in aggregate demand, a shift to the left. So an increase is a shift to the right, a decrease is a shift to the left. Movement along is when you see a change in the price level that's moving it along the exact same curve.